this morning to see the sunrise. Such a good feeling to know the day is mine. I've got a chance to be all that I can be. It's gonna be a good day for me. Well, hello and welcome once again to a new beginning in Christ Gospel Hour. I'm telling you what, we got a program today. We Praise sure do. And uh, seated next mm. to me today is my good friend, mm. Pastor Ken Crow, uh, who has church at the well there on Salmon Lane in Harrison, Arkansas. Now listen, folks, I'm going to tell you right up front, praise God, <laughs> uh, he, we got a message for you today. So you need to go call somebody and tell them, hey, they're on again. Amen. Praise God. We, uh, you know, I just, suddenly the term devil chasing mm-hmm. crossed my mind. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. How, we may have a devil chasing mm-hmm. service today because Amen. I'm going to tell you what, folks, you have the power to tell the devil to leave. Amen. You have the power to chase him away, mm-hmm. praise God, mm-hmm. and tell him to cease and desist in your life. Mm-hmm. And he has to obey Amen. you when you do it in the name of of Jesus Amen. Christ. No other name. Every every knee has to bow. Every, knee. every knee has to bow Amen. to the name of Jesus. Yes, it does. God. The devil would like you to think that he has that power. Mm-hmm. Now, the, power, the devil has power to deceive, but he has no power to create, and he certainly doesn't have any power to make you do anything. But he t- sure talked a lot of people into stuff. Amen. <laughs> right Amen. Now. You've got to, my beautiful wife, Carolyn, has got some things she needs to announce. Praise the Lord. Carolyn? Amen. All right. Well, first off, I always say, ha- ha- I will say happy birthday to my cousin, Jeanette. Today's her birthday. But uh, happy birthday, Jeanette. But now, let's get down to the serious stuff. Um, <laughs> we've got some uh, revivals coming up that we want to talk to you about. Brother James and I will be at Tiptonville, Tennessee, at Keystone Church of God. And we love that church. The 27th, 28th, and 29th of May. That's just a couple of weeks ago away. I hope that you can call someone up in that area. Tell them to come. It's going to be a wonderful revival. Amen. And we're starting that off with a block pride. Block, be mm-hmm. well, block, block party. party <laughs> on Friday night, <laughs> praise God. And then mm-hmm. we're going to have three services uh, Sunday morning, uh, Saturday night, night, Sunday morning, mm-hmm. and Sunday night, praise oh, God. Hope you, you can call someone to come or come yourself. We'd love mm-hmm. to meet you and talk with you and fellowship with you. Also, did you want to talk about today's guests? Well, well, in just a minute, we've okay. also now on a, on, if you're listening down south uh, today, we're going to be at Sister Mary Ledford's church, <clears throat> Tabernacle Church there in Booger Hollow. Uh, there which is, is a place. Amen. Which is six miles north of Dover, which is nine miles north of Russellville. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's, that's why they call it Booger Holler, right. I guess. It, you you got to go start from someplace <laughs> else to get there. Hallelujah. And that's going to be when? That's going to be on the 28th of June, mm-hmm. uh, where we'll be there. Starting at 7 and o'clock. And then uh, on the 18th of June, we'll be over with Harvest Labors here in Mountain Home out on Highway 5 South. Praise God. And uh, so, uh, if you have an opportunity, and uh, when we're going to be in your neighborhood, you come out and visit with us. Praise God. I did want to re- mention that the Harvest Laborers have a first and third Saturday of every month. They have a singing. That's yes. up until November. And so keep a, that in mind. It's really a blessing. I like it when I go out there because I'm about the youngest person there. <laughs> praise the Lord. Probably except for Sister Carolyn, of course. Good thing. But, good save. <laughs> praise God. Mm. Now, we've got that out of the way. Let's mm-hmm. talk about Church at the Well. Yeah. What's going on at Church at the Well, Brother Ken? Uh, well, we've got a revival coming up June the 3rd uh, at 7 o'clock. That'll be on a Friday night. And uh, our state overseer for the Church of God in Arkansas, Bishop uh, Les Higgins, will be preaching on Friday night, the June the third. Uh, powerful man of God, uh, uh, he'll have a message for us. Uh, uh, Saturday, June the fourth, at seven, uh, Brother Gerald Crab. A lot of you know the Crab family. Uh, uh, well, this is uh, the dad of the Crab family, right. uh, Jason's dad, and and and. Uh, uh, Sherry Boland's dad, and uh, he is just a powerful man of God. Last year, uh, during the revival, he was with us last year, and on Sunday morning uh, last year, we had 10 
that accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And, wow. and I don't know how Praise many uh, rededications yeah. that morning. The, the altars were mm. full. Well, he'll be there Saturday, June 4th at 7. And he'll be there Sunday morning, uh, June the 5th at 10 a.m. And he'll be there Sunday night, June 5th at 6 p.m., Brother Crab. Uh, again, he'll be there the 4th and the 5th for all those services and uh, again on Friday night uh, uh, another wonderful man of God June 3rd Bishop Les Higgins uh, mm. but uh, that's a, a couple of weeks away and uh, uh, we'd like for you to come out to one of our regular services and visit and give us Amen. a try we're just a bunch of folks that have uh, have really just uh, picked up and started again well, in our lives and, and some of us several times like you've been through life amen took a walk and, through and, life and, and uh, it's uh, <clears throat> it, it goes along with the name of this uh, this show New Beginnings and uh, that's what we're about at Church to Well and we, we'd just love to have you and your family to come out and, and, and try us out now you're located on Salmon Lane right yes. there in Harrison and yes. what's your phone number that they call uh, you at it's 870-577-7887 and, and I've got that phone with me all the time so so just, just feel well, that's free just to call wonderful. Hey, okay. man, let me tell you something else I want to brag on my brother here praise God uh, he's well known for people that have trouble he goes out and tries to help and his yes. whole church does that Another thing I like about Pastor Crow is he ain't going to turn his back on you and walk off when you're in trouble. Praise God. And, Thank you know, you. a lot of times we take hits for that. Yes, we Some do. Some people say, mm-hmm. well, you know, you all just let mm-hmm. them go on. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you earn a bad reputation because you're around mm-hmm. them. Well, let me say this, folks. Jesus has never given up on anybody. God certainly has not. So praise God. Right. If, if Until God gives up on you and Jesus gives up on you, I ain't giving up on you and neither Pastor Crow. No. All of us have sinned Amen. and fallen short of the glory Amen. of God. But aren't you glad he loves us anyway? Amen. So we Amen. need a friend. And part of being a Christian, folks, is when you have a, a brother or sister mm-hmm. somebody that falls by the wayside, we have a responsibility to help them up and pick them up. Well, what Amen. if they what if they hurt you? Well, mm. I've been hurt before. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I've healed pretty good, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you going to get hurt when mm. you help people? Of mm. course you will. Right. But I'm going to tell you something. You want to be pleasing to God, help somebody today. Amen. Praise God. Help Amen. somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. And also, I want you all to, out there to be in real strong. All you prayer warriors at home and churches, I want you to be in prayer for this revival that's coming Amen. over there. Praise Amen. Not just this one, but revivals. Right. Everywhere. Everywhere. Right. Right. Everywhere. Right. Because we need revival in right. this country. Can right. We, more than any Amen. place else. Amen. Of all the countries in the world that need missionaries, the United States needs good yes. Bible believing Amen. Christians, uh, right. praise God, missionaries. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we got a wonderful group coming up today. Praise God. Southern Faith from Calico Rock. Uh, boy, these folks are wonderful. Mm-hmm. We're going to get right into their music. Uh, Praise the Lord. Uh, you had some information yeah, about do. their church there, Sister Carol. Um, he's a pastor over at New Hope Christian Fellowship Church right there in Calico, which is just uh, five miles out of, of South uh, Highway 5 South. If you're in that area, pay him a visit. They start their morning services at 1030. And uh, he just wants to invite you out. Uh, their local group right here, you want to come to your church, give him a call. But right now, we just want to bless them. Amen. And Amen. that's uh, Brother Wade Moser. Brother now, Wade. On, let me put a plug in for him because they have a program uh, Monday through Friday on 91.5 FM. On the radio. On the radio. And they do some wonderful singing. And you'll be blessed. Turn over there. From 9 to 11. From 9 to two 11. Two hours. Yeah, two hours. And uh, his wife is named Taffy. That's the first Taffy God. I know. That's the first Taffy I ever met. <laughs> She's just as sweet as Taffy, too. Praise yeah, God. Yeah, she is. And then uh, they also have a third member there. Mm-hmm. And I p- keep forgetting his name. What? I'm going to get it right here. Uh, it's, Jerry Stoll. 
Jerry yes. Stoll. So, uh, listen, folks, they're going to bless you here in song. And if you Amen. have an opportunity, you got over there to uh, live, folks, mm-hmm. south of Mountain Home here. Get over to Calico Rock and, and, and come to their church Amen. and be a part. Call them and tell them you saw them on the show. How's Amen. that? Amen. So, we're going to turn it over to them, and they're going to get to singing right now. And we'll be right back with some good preaching. Praise the Lord. Amen.
tonight because we have an opportunity to serve the Lord, to be in His awesome presence, to, to feel this, what I feel here tonight. And I realized that years ago, when I made that trip down the altar, I was six years old. And a lot of people say when you're young like that, they don't know what they're doing. But I guarantee you, Brother Scott, I remember it like it was yesterday. And I remember walking down that aisle feeling like I was the worst sinner in the world. He said, what could a six-year-old child have done? You didn't know me. <laughs> Truth is, it's not the amount of sin. It's the way of sin. Yes. You could have been the most moral type person you want to be in this world. But the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags inside God. But I'm glad tonight to say that during those years, I wasn't exactly what God wanted me to be all the time. But I'm telling you, He never failed to be the Jesus He promised He would be. There's an old song that we just started doing. We've only done it one time in our, anywhere, and it's really going to be a test for me to try to do it tonight. Because Jerry also has been sick, and he's not going to be able to talk either. So for both of us to get here and sing tonight, I'm dead. Thanks, grace of God. Because neither one of us can do anything at all till the, till the day about noon. And I'll tell you that, just, I thank God for that. But I'm going to tell you something. Had it not been for that cross, had it not been for the blood of Jesus, none of us would have a chance. Right. This is no song, but it means a great deal to me. So <coughs>
Praise the Lord. It's good to be back uh, this morning. 
with the New Beginnings Gospel Hour. I just appreciate Brother James and Sister Carolyn so much. Uh, uh, I'll tell you this ministry, I've uh, gotten a lot of phone calls uh, over the last few weeks from people that has has uh, seen the program, and, and I just hear from a lot of different people about how much they enjoy this your program ever every uh, uh week and and uh you know it's a blessing i've got an aunt and uncle uh eugene and bernice crow i'm going to mention them this morning uh they they're not able to be in church right now got some sickness going on and they just enjoy this program every week and, and i just want to say hi to them this morning i know they'll be watching and and uh you know they're not able to be at church but this way they can they can hear some good music, uh, wonderful music, and they can hear the Word of God. And we're going to, this morning, uh, going to talk uh, today about uh, uh, why Jesus came uh, to the earth to begin with. Now, now that's misunderstood a lot. And if, if it, it, I know when I was a, a younger man, before I got saved and before I came to know the Lord, in a personal way, I misunderstood what Jesus was all about. And this morning, we're going to try to get a clear understanding of why Jesus came. Now, Jesus tells us in in Luke, the fourth chapter, and eighteenth and nineteenth verse, Jesus gives his mission statement, and he had just been uh, he had been baptized by John the Baptist, and and he had went out into the wilderness. And, and he'd been out there for 40 days. And he came back and he, he it said that he, he came to Nazareth. I'll start back in verse 16. Where he had been brought up. He came back to where he'd been raised. And it says, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now I want you to notice something about that. Right there before we go any further. It said that Jesus himself went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. Now, now, if the Son of God, the very only begotten Son of God, believed that it was important to be in the house of God on the appointed day, then, then he set an example there for us. Amen. You're going to be, you're going to be, we're going to be blessed when we are a part of a body of Christ. Now, we may have ministries and we may go out, but, and have things that we have to do in our ministry. But to be a part of a, a body, a part of a, 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 a part of a, a body of believers. Amen. It says, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now Jesus, he didn't open to this part just by opening up the Bible and, and, and coming to a certain place. This was his day to proclaim why he had came to earth, why God the Father had sent him the Son to earth. And we're going to look at this. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and re in recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So what Jesus says here is that he, he came to lift people up, to, to give people a, a, a new life. In John 10.10, 10, and, and, and we're going to turn there for here just for a second and we're going to see where Jesus re restates the same purpose he says the thief comes not to except to steal and to kill and to destroy he says I have come that they might have life and that they may have life have it more abundantly now Jesus again he, he comes in a positive direction toward us as believers or, or those even if we're not saved today. Jesus came in order to, to, to change lives and to, 
to, to make a difference. He didn't come to condemn. There's enough co condemnation out here in the world. We, we can find condemnation today wherever we go. Or whoever, wherever we go today out here in the world, we can find plenty of people ready to, to condemn. We can find plenty of people ready to, to write us off or to, or, or, or to criticize what we're doing. I, I know that, that it, it, it seems like anymore that it don't matter what, what one does or, or what they're doing. There'll be criticism. But I want to tell you today, Jesus didn't come to criticize. Jesus didn't come to, to, to condemn to condemn and to 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 spread the the what now now what I'm trying to get to here is that that I, I mentioned before is when I was younger I thought Jesus came to condemn I thought God was up there and He was just waiting for me and everyone else that He could to make a mistake and for Him to just drop the hammer on. Well, I want us to realize today through this scripture through these scriptures. That, that Jesus wants to give us a, an abundant life. Not only life, but He says a, a, a more abundant life. A life beyond what we're able to, to, to even dream. You know, He says that He didn't come to, to kill, steal, or destroy. That's the devil's job. He, the devil, He says, came to do those things. But He said, I came that, 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 you, you might have life and have life more abundantly. In Luke four eighteen and 19, he named off several things there. Several, several problems, broken hearts, the oppressed. And he came to liberate us from, from the clutches of, of not only the devil, but of the world and, and, and of those that are, are, that, that, feel like they need to condemn Jesus when he caught the lady in when the lady was caught in adultery and they brought her to to Jesus there in John Jesus interest there was for her to be lifted up and to be restored they were ready to they were ready to kill her they they wanted to stone this lady the religious people they wanted to to stone her but Jesus rather was more interested in lifting this lady up and getting her restored. And he told her, after he virtually saved her life, he told her to go and to sin no more. Yes, we need to strive and do, to do the best we can. But I want to tell you today, Jesus is a lot more interested in restoration than he is condemning us for what we do. Because if there's if there's a chance now Jesus is a kind he can take and he 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 can not only give us a second chance but he can give us a, he he the chances are are unlimited. He told his apostles that they they asked him his disciples they said how many times should we forgive each other, and Jesus told them seventy times seven just in one day. Well, Jesus is not going to ask you and I to do something that He's not going to do. Or God the Father is not going to do. So the forgiveness is there. And I just believe that there's somebody today that's watching and and and, and you feel like that, that you haven't been forgiven. Well, I'm going to tell you today, Jesus has forgiven you. The fact that you are, are, are just, you know, if we just ask Him, if we'll just cry out to Him, and I believe you've already done that. But you need to know today that He has forgiven you. That everything, the old things are passed away. And all things this morning have become new. And Jesus wants you to go into that abundant life today. I want to go to a couple of scriptures here in the, uh, in the Old Testament today. I want to go to a couple of instances. And I, I, this morning... When I got up, I, I I really hadn't planned to go to this scripture because I I, I preach out of this scripture a lot, and I, I I preached a little bit out of it Sunday morning, it at uh, it, it our church service. But the first place is Jeremiah thirty six, and the Lord just kept 
It's Jeremiah 36, 27, 28. The Lord kept laying this on my heart this morning, and I feel like there's somebody out there today that needs to hear what we're fixing to read. And I'm going to read uh, a couple of verses here out of this out of this group of scriptures. But he says, Now after the king had burned the scroll with the words which Baruch had written in the instruction of Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And he says, Take yet another scroll and, re- and write in all, <clears throat> at all the former words that were in the first, which Jericho... <clears throat> Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burned. Now the king had burned the scroll. Jeremiah had heard from the Lord, and, and, and he had he had written this down. It had been written down by Baruch, and, and as Jeremiah had translated it from the Lord, and it had been put on a scroll. Well, the king, after being read part of this scroll, he he just. Uh, 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 pitched it in the fire, demanded it be burned up, and and, and you know at that point uh, 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 Jeremiah he was calling out to God. He said, "Well, what do you want us to do now?" And you may this morning you may be thinking, "Well, God, I've, I've tried and, and and this didn't go the way that 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 I thought it would. That that this didn't happen the 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 way that that it was planned to be." Well, God's telling you this morning the same thing that He told Jeremiah and Baruch. He's saying, rewrite it. Start again and just rewrite this. Yeah, I know that, that, that it's been burnt. I know that, 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 you know that, that you may feel like that it's all been destroyed. But what God is saying is for you just to get up again and rewrite it. He sent Jesus so the scroll could be rewritten. He sent Jesus uh, 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 into, onto this earth to walk this earth. And Jesus walked this earth for 32 and a half years. Amen. So the scroll could be rewritten. See, God had placed uh, uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And they, they, they failed. They failed. They came short of the glory of God. And from that time, sin entered into the world. But you know, the Bible says where sin entered, that grace entered. And grace, amen, is a lot stronger than the sin. And and the scroll was rewritten. The scroll was rewritten when Jesus came to this earth and he began and he went to the cross and he died on the cross and his blood was shed. That scroll was rewritten. Now, Jeremiah, he could have you know, he had to be a little bit discouraged when the king just burned up all this work that they had done. I'll tell you. Sometimes we 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 just we labor, and we we sow. I, I've got a friend that he's planted a, a a garden this year, a vegetable garden, and he was telling me the other day. He says he's replanted that thing three times. He said the first time the cold weather, the unseasonable cold weather we had, prevented the seeds from coming up. He said the second time he said that he went out there and he replanted, and we had some wind there for. Uh, uh, a couple of days it was just, just uh, out of the ordinary and, and it blew the seeds away and he said he replanted the third time and he said that time the the we got that big flooding rain that we got a few weeks ago and his whole garden became submerged but he said you know what he said I'm determined to have a garden this year he said I'm determined so he goes out and he, he, he replants it again now now it's easy to get discouraged when when things we feel like are are, are 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 destroyed, but really they're not destroyed. Now now thing we may see there's a difference between devastation and destroy. There's a difference now. Now there may be things that come up in our life that are pretty dis, devi, <coughs> devastating. Excuse me, or they may be discouraging. But I want to tell you today, you're not destroyed. You're you're not destroyed. And long as you have Jesus, you can re- just like my uh, 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 buddy that's planting the garden. You can replant. You can get up, and you can start again. Amen. God told Jeremiah, He says, "You just rewrite the scroll." He says, "You start out, and you rewrite it again." So you just you just, you know that, and, and and God's got a way of every time that something is rewritten. 
Amen. Now, God's perfect every time. Don't misunderstand. But I'll tell you those things that when, when we rewrite the scroll or when we replant the garden or when we, we get up and start again, things are going to actually going to be a little bit better because we have learned something from, from, from that experience. See, we can take what we're going through today or what we've been through today. And I, and I think you're watching this today and I think you've been through something that, that, that not many people have. And, and, and as you're going through that, you're going to be able to come out of that. You're going to come out of it with victory because of Jesus, but you're also going to come out of that and you're going to be able, amen, to tell somebody else not to give up. See, that's what, that, that's what this gospel is all about. It's not giving up. It's about starting over. It's about new beginnings. It's a, it, it, it's about uh, 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 starting over to rewrite the book. Famous uh, author, I was reading, Amen. Here a while back, where he 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 wrote this written this very famous book, and I believe it was the twenty seventh or twenty eighth edition that he had wrote that he finally had published because. Because every time that he would begin to write it, to, amen, something would happen. He would get interrupted or it just didn't sound right to him. But he said every time that he, that he went back and wrote it, that it got just a little bit more better every time. A little more interesting. See, that's how God works. That's how he, that's how he forms the vessel. We know the, uh, in Jeremiah, the story, amen, of the potter. And, and 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 how he took the clay and he formed it in his hands and he put it on the wheel and and he would see a marred spot he'd see a crack in the in the clay and they said he would get it and he'd he didn't throw it out he didn't take it and and, and throw it in the the junk heap he took it and he reformed he put it back on the wheel and he reformed it he reformed it because amen a vessel is so important. The vessels that the potter used back in those days that, or that he made, amen, they were all for use. In those days, they didn't make pottery to, to set up really to look at. It was all made for use. God is making us today because he's needing some vessels that he can use, amen. And, 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 and if, if there's been a little marred place in the clay along the way and it's been, it's been repaired, then it's just a testimony. It's just a testimony. And I want to tell you today, there, there's no vessels that hadn't been marred. If people were honest, amen, there have been times in, in our lives where there's been something that, 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 that has scarred us, but God's able to take that, and He's able to put us back on the wheel, and we became a and we become a powerful vessel, Amen, for Him. Praise God. Now, I want to go to another scripture, and it's in Job. Let's think about Job just for a minute. Now, here's a guy that's very wealthy. He's very very uh, uh, God, well, he's, he's one of the richest men, richest men of his time. He's 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 a man of God. He's got a super relationship with God, and and here he is, and everything has been interrupted or taken away. But we're going to go go to the fourteenth chapter. The seventh verse, and I, 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 the Lord would not let me get away from these scriptures this morning. And I know you're watching today, and you're hearing these scripture for a reason. Job fourteen and verse seven, it says, "For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease." Though its root may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at, now listen to this. He 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 he, he says, <clears throat> and though the stump may die in the ground, verse nine says, yet at the scent of what now now see it it ain't over at verse eight. We can look at this if you've got your Bible today, uh, uh, then then follow along here and mark verse eight because. That's where that's where the 
the enemy would like for you to quit. The enemy would like for you to stop on verse 8. It says, though its roots may grow old in the earth and, and its stump may die in the ground. Now, now, we could quit there. We could quit there and, and, and draw a conclusion that when something happens to us, like it happened to Job, that it's just all over. That it's not used trying anymore. But, but, but thank God, the Word of God don't stop there. It says, yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. But at the scent of water it will bud and, and, and bring, <coughs> excuse me, and, it, and yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. See, there's a hope. There's a hope today. There's a hope. Don't stop at verse 8 and say, well, I'm just going to give up because I've cut down. I've let something happen to me. Amen. Or something has happened to me. and, and, and So I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to stop. Don't do that today. Jesus didn't come for you or I to stop. He didn't come that we, that we, would, that we would quit here. And He's not going to let us down. He's not going to let us down. Thank you. He says that there's a hope. And it said that it's a scent of water that it's gonna that that it, that it's gonna bud again. I want to tell you about a little tree. And it's there behind my house there and my wife's Melissa's house there at the parsonage. There's a there's a box elder tree and I don't know they grow super fast. They're kind of a soft wood, but they grow they grow really quick. And, and a couple of years ago, after the ice storm, that that tree it was just it, it was just devastated. It was uh, 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 just just brought all the way down to the ground, and, and it left a little bit of a stump there. Well, I went out there and 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 cut that stump off level with the ground. That's what two or three years ago. Well, over the last couple of summers, that thing has shot forth again, and even though it had been cut down. And at the base, at the base of that stump, right down, even with the ground, is 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 it's really broad. It's been there for years, and no telling how many times that thing's been cut down. No telling how many times that it's been devastated. Well, here a, a, a week or so ago, that thing I, I was out there just a day or two before we got the storm, and I was out there and I was looking, and it was. It, it was uh, uh, 10 or 15 foot high again. And it was about that big around. And it had grew and, and, and was prospering. Well, the other night we got another storm. And, and again, I went out there. I heard it hit the house. I went out there the next morning. And sure enough, this same tree had been broken again. And I got to looking down around the base of that tree this time and there was a band that had been put around it and I don't know I don't know how many years ago that it had been put there but it had grown in around the stump and it was grown into it many many times that tree had to have fallen or had to be broken but every time that it every time that it happens it comes back and that's what God's talking about here that, 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 that we can come back no matter how many times we've been broken. Because if we're rooted in Jesus Christ, he talks about, he says that, that, that though its root in verse 8 may grow old in the earth. See, every time that it storms, not only does the wind or the ice come, but the, the, the root begin, grabs a little bit more moisture, a little bit more nutrient. And it begins to begins to expand. See this this the storms that, that we go through, and and even what Job is bad is what he was going through. He grew from it. If we went to the end of Job, we'd find out that everything was restored to him. That it, that that he had more children. That he had he had uh, all of his land and all of his uh, cattle. It said that. Uh, 
that it was more than restored, that God multiplied it. See, what you, what we're facing today or what we're going through today, amen, if we'll hang on and we'll stay rooted in Jesus Christ, uh, 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 God's going to multiply that blessing that, uh, 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 and we're going to grow spiritually. See, our spiritual growth is so important, amen, because storms are going to come. They're, they're, we're going to face things in life. I'm not up here uh, 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 trying to preach uh, uh, any negativity at all, but I'm saying just life in general will bring storms. And, and, and in our Christian walk, see, Job, amen, uh, uh, being God, God said, man, he said he's upright. He's perfect and upright. God called him that. But he still went through something. But he grew from it. Now that tree there in the yard, it'll come back. It'll come back. And that foundation or the base of the tree will just keep getting bigger and bigger. It'll just keep expanding. It'll just keep expanding. See, every time that it expands after a storm, it'll be harder. That foundation will be a little bit better. That root will be down in the ground just a little bit deeper. And it'll be stronger when it faces a storm. Now, now the storm, the storm will come, but it'll be able to withstand the storm. And if it gets broke off, it'll just come back. I tell you what, I thank God, Amen. When He when He created the trees and, 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 and He had this stuff and He had this this kind of thought in mind that it's going to come. That that man, they may blow over, they may get broken off, but they're not dead. I want you to know today that your life is not over. I think you're watching this today, and I think you had something to, oh, I feel this so strongly. You've had something just in the past week or so to affect your life. You've had something just in the last few days that has that has devastated you. You've had something, you've had that unexpected storm to blow through, and it's... It sets you back, but I want to tell you, you're going to come back. You're going to come back because of Jesus Christ. If we'll put our trust... See, one more thing before I close. It says, at the sin of water, at the sin of water, the Holy Spirit is that water today. And it's bringing, it's bringing, it's bringing the Spirit of the Lord. And it's going to, the Spirit of the Lord is going to restore just like Jesus said, it's going to restore. It's going to have. It's going to be abundant, and it's going to be more abundantly than it's ever been. God bless you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Ken. I'm, I, I just feel right now. I just feel like we need to pray. There's yes. somebody out there Amen. who's going through some... Ooh, praise the Lord. Let's do that. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and, and somebody's told them, well, you just wells to give up. Right. Uh, and what you're preaching, I'm telling you what, folks, it doesn't matter what you've been through. Jesus Christ is always going to return you back and do what He desires for you to do. Right. So we never quit. We just keep on keeping on. Amen. <laughs> you know, Brother James, you are going to go through the storms... It's, are you going to go through it with Jesus or by yourself? Right. Amen. This is, that's the question you got to right. ask yourself. Am Amen. I going to face these storms by myself or do, am I going to have Jesus there Amen. for me, Amen. with Amen. me during this stuff? As long, and I know this, when Jesus is walking there with me, you going to come out. Destruction ain't going to happen. Right. <laughs> that have to, it'd have to destroy Jesus. Right, and what right. pa- what power could possibly right. destroy Jesus mm-hmm. Christ? Amen. Jesus. That's why uh, in the ninety first Psalm comes to mind. Ken, mm-hmm. He said, it, it, "Literally, if we will live under the wing or in the house of God, then no destruction is going to come near us. Right. I mean, right. who, who could possibly hurt?" God. Right. Let's pray Amen. for those people Let's out pray. there. Amen. If you will, Brother Ken, pray and just tell them, hey, it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today, Lord. Father, we pray today for those today, Lord, Father, that are are watching. We pray, Lord, because 
we know today, Lord Father, that we can pray a prayer of, of protection and we can pray a prayer of restoration. Today, Lord, we pray both those prayers. And Lord, today we can receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And Lord, like Brother Jim just said, that if, Jesus, if we're walking with Jesus, if we're walking with Him, then we're under the protection of the Almighty. We're under the protection Amen. of you. you Jesus. Today, Lord Father, Amen. we put our trust in you. We put our hope Praise in you. Lord. It said the hope of a tree in that scripture. Well, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And what he done at the cross. Lord, we praise you, Lord Father, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And that's Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful message. Yes. I'm going to thank Brother Ken for coming once again. We always yes. enjoy you so yes. much. Brother. Enjoy. Now, let me also say, forgot to mention this at the start of the program. Next week, Sister Mary, Mary Ledford. Ledford will be here from uh, Booger Holler Tabernacle. Uh, just six miles north of Dover, Arkansas on Highway 7 and you hit Amen. Highway 164 and it's two miles down there. Uh, but she's going to be on you're going to be blessed. But I just, I just feel and I know in my heart that God's touching you out Amen. there by the words that Kenneth has brought today. He preaches what the Holy Spirit puts on his heart. And somebody out there needed to hear, brother, what you had to say Amen. today. Amen. Praise God. So Praise I just, God. see, God is an on-time God. Yes, yes, he is. And he knows exactly what we need. Well, we're out of time God. again. Praise God. So rem- again. remember this. You, you shall, shall know, know the truth, truth and, and the, the truth, truth will make, make you free. free. Listen, we'll see you again next God week. Praise you. Lord. Turn in. Call your friends and say, hey, you got there. If you miss it on Sunday morning, Watch it's on again it. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. Praise God. Woke up this morning to see the sunrise. Such a good feeling to know the day is mine. I've got a chance to be all that I can be. It's going to be a good day for